All righty. Hi, everybody. My name is Amber. I'm a senior on the program. I'm a senior in the program on the environment here at the UW. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the realities of home composting. This research is important because we all produce waste in some capacity and the mismanagement of organic waste directly contributes to global warming. Composting is a known solution to the problem of organic waste and has been implemented in large scale centralized systems, which should be familiar to everyone here in the form of city composting. Although these schemes um, result in increased rates of composting in general, this form of composting gives rise to a new set of problems such as static decomposition, which happens as your waste sits in your bin waiting for pickup and sorting errors as well as emissions from transportation. Centralized composting is also known to require more resources in comparison with home composting and becomes economically unsustainable for medium to large scale facilities very quickly. Home composting is economically sustainable and has the greatest impact in terms of greenhouse gas reductions. However, its application is far and few between, which led me to the research question of what barriers prevent Seattleite home composting and how can they be remediated? To answer this, I did independent research and collected data using interviews and surveys. I first interviewed with Carol Miles. She's a professor at WSU with experience in composting who was able to give me a bit more of a nuanced view that of what matters to the public in terms of waste. I then surveyed 65 Seattle residents on personal barriers and perceived benefits of city composting. I was able to source these respondents partially from the clientele with my internship with Homegrown Organics, who's a landscaping company, and through social media such as Facebook and Twitter. I found that most people felt that pests, space, time, and smell were the largest barriers to home composting, as you can see in figure one. But that a desire to combat climate change and live sustainably were large motivators to composting in general. 63% of respondents expressed interest in learning more about compost, and I found that there was a misconception among Seattleites being that most didn't know city composting to be less sustainable than home composting. I also found that there was a knowledge gap concerning the different methods of composting. For instance, most respondents seem to think of some form of hot composting, which is known to produce all the major barriers listed above. It's smelly, involves a lot of labor, time, and space, and attracts pests, as opposed to other methods like vermicomposting, otherwise known as a worm bin, which don't produce these barriers or produces them to a vastly lessened extent. A general theme from my interview and surveys was that whatever the home composting strategy was, it would need to be convenient and cheap. Home composting is already generally cheap, typically requiring under $40 for startup and maintenance. But amassing the knowledge of every method out there and figuring out which one will work for you is not convenient at all. So because of this, the solution I recommend is in the form of education and provision. The most resistant groups were apartment dwellers and parents because they generally felt that they didn't have a use for compost or the time or space for it. This is seen in a lot of free responses such as, I'm not really looking to take on any more right now or I would consider it if I lived in a house. However, composting can be done in ways that avoid these headaches. Container-based method, container methods such as Bakashi, bacterial composting, and vermicomposting, which we already talked about, it are great options and suit most lifestyles. These methods fit into the established routine of city composting such that you can add to the bin and then remove the product every few weeks, which you might be familiar with when you add to your current compost bin and then take it out to the curb. Following this, I would recommend implementing a composting scheme into group living situations, such as in apartments or dorms through a municipally funded program and at the K through 12 level to specifically target these resistant groups. Repeated and in-depth learning and practice of these methods in schools will allow, first of all, schools to implement on-site composting. Second of all, children will develop lasting habits, and this will also result in the recruitment of parents through their child's excitement or through homeworks, as young kids are typically really excited about worms and gardening. Therefore, next steps for the City of Seattle should include policy changes in community living and early education to provide convenient home composting solutions. I'd like to say a quick thank you to Eli Wheat, Jenna Duncan, John Colin, Anna Wyman, Carol Miles, and everyone else who's helped me along the way. 
Thank you guys for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way or ask me on Twitter at Amber underscore Pfeiffer and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you.